Hi and welcome to Diligent Dad. I'm Andrew and it's my mission with the channel to support you in the early steps of fatherhood. Please remember to hit subscribe and the bell icon so you get notified when I'm dropping new videos twice a week. Okay, I wanted to speak to you today about the, some of the things that surprised me the most when I was a young dad, when I was a new dad, okay? I like to think I'm still a young dad now. So, when we brought our first, uh, first little boy home from hospital, we had to take him back in the next morning. It was late at night and we didn't uh, manage to complete the sort of discharge process. There's no medical problems or anything, but we didn't actually quite manage to complete the discharge process from hospital. So what they said to us was, go home tonight, get a good night's sleep, and just come back in nine o'clock in the morning, and we'll see you then, and we'll just complete the initial checks. Baby's fine now, we'll just take him home uh, and bring him back in tomorrow morning. And we'll just do the final checks. Um, and obviously, my wife and I had were new, new parents, had some experience of babies, but never of having full responsibility for very, very, very small people. Um, that's one thing. Uh, I was very surprised at just how small a little baby is. T tiny little baby, able to hold them almost in one hand. That's a living person with well over 200 bones and all those organs and everything. So that's one thing. Uh, how small the baby was. The second thing is how robust they are. Because we had been like molly coddling this little person that we'd had under our uh, duty of care for 12 hours. When we took it and we'd been like, like changed, changed a couple of nappies during the night and been like taking like half an hour each time. We'd been so careful in doing it. But um, we took him into the hospital and handed him over to the nurse. I think the nurse saw how careful we were being this little boy and the nurse I think wanted to show us just how robust he is and she took him and wasn't reckless and we now see that by no means was she reckless with him at all but she took him and, and lay him out on this changing station and he, he did a poo so that needed to be changed and she, she took the opportunity she says I'll do that I'll sort it and she put him on this changing station and she just grabbed him by the two feet and lifted him up not vertical, but lifted the lower half of the body off the changing station and wiped his bum uh, and gave him a very thorough, but compared to how we've been treating him for the last 12 hours, quite a, uh, I was like, oh, she looks like she's been quite rough, but she knows what she's doing and she was doing the right thing. And it was just an eye opener for us of how robust this little person who's been created inside mums uh, mum's tummy for the last nine months. How robust they actually are when they come out. That really surprised me. Uh, and yeah, I think from that point onwards, we're like, oh right, just do things with him that we need to do. We don't need to wrap him up in cotton wool, metaphorically. And we don't need to be um, overly protective of him, naturally avoid falls and you're going to avoid anything like that but just in terms of when you're cleaning a nappy get in there clean it clean the poo off doesn't need to take half an hour a couple of wet wipes a couple of cotton wool buds with a bit of water get the bum cleaned and get the nappy back on back to action whatever um, whatever you need to do the second thing that was a learning experience for me was just how often this little person needs to eat. It makes complete sense now, because when that baby's born, I've talked about how small they are, fit into the palm of your hand, literally. Maybe with their feet coming down here a little bit, but you can support that baby in, in your hand. And that baby, so the baby's small, so you can imagine how small their tummy is. Tiny little tummy inside. Okay, so that tummy can only hold a very, very small quantity of milk to start with. And when we say small, we mean like a couple of tablespoons worth of milk. The tummy is so small. Because the tummy has never needed to be any bigger. While it was in the womb, that baby got a constant supply of food from mum along the umbilical cord. And it could just 
take that constant supply. It never needed to store any food in its stomach to last it to the next meal. Okay, so it got this constant supply. So the stomach has never needed to be um, full for any length of time to store food until the next feed. Whereas once the baby's been born, that baby is, uh, is self-sufficient to an extent in that between feeds, it's only getting food from one place, it's only getting energy from one place, and that is from whatever's inside their tummy. And initially when they're born, that tummy is like tiny, tiny. So it, mom fills it up with some milk, and then, or dad fills it up with some milk if you're doing bottles, and then it empties. And the baby's hungry uh, an hour later. So it needs to be fed again uh, an hour or two later. And that cycle goes on, and different babies are different. Some babies will go to sleep for longer periods. Three, four hours would be success in the early weeks if the baby will sleep for that long. Uh, and then they'll be waking up, and that tummy will be pretty empty, and they'll be pretty hungry, and they'll be very much looking for mom and dad to, to give them some more food. So the frequency with which that baby has to eat and drink in the early weeks uh, surprised me a lot. The tummy so small, it needs to be fed constantly because it can't store any food. And the final thing that, um, that surprised me a little bit when the baby was born is how much work goes in to supporting such a small uh, life. Uh, and you might think, oh, let's change a few nappies, feed the baby occasionally. But the, the learning curve to do all that and like the admin around it is significant, okay? And I would really encourage any dads going into that period to, to, uh, to get as much else out of the way beforehand, get those any personal goals you want to achieve, get them achieved beforehand, and any work you can get done before that baby comes, get it done. Because when the baby comes, it will be all consuming, okay? In the first week or so, you'll be getting guests uh, as regularly as you can accept, who will be desperate to come and see this new baby. Grandparents, friends, neighbors, everyone means the best, and it's a truly magical time, having these lovely people come to say hi to your new baby. But it's tiring, and it's tiring for mum, it's tiring for you, uh, and dad, you need to be of the mindset that it's going to be a busy time, okay? Now once that initial period's over, that first couple of days when you've got lots of guests and everyone's been to see the baby, then it's you, mum, and, and the new baby. And while you might think, therefore, the guests are gone, so it calms down a bit, but you were launching into a, a six-month period, maybe, of regular nappies in the middle of the night, every couple of hours during the day, you're launching into regular feeds, mum breastfeeding, maybe completely breastfeeding, or you might do a mix of breastfeeding and bottles, or you might go completely formula fed via the bottle. Uh, whichever one of those you, you go for um, comes with a lot of admin uh, and high expectations that mums are able to do it themselves, and dads manage to do it themselves, but it's a much more manageable process more manageable period in everyone's lives if dad you're going into that ready to support mum and of the mindset that this is going to be a super busy period i can expect maybe to do the occasional thing like especially before you go back to work i can expect to do the occasional thing but not for myself but otherwise it's going to be very very busy supporting mum if we can, as much as you can support mum dad, that will benefit mum in the long run, it will benefit baby, and it will benefit you as well. Obviously once you've finished your paternity leave, you take paternity leave and you go back to work, um, your evenings and weekends will be spent doing as much as possible to give mum a break because mum is with that baby all day every day, okay, and wants to be with baby all day every day but it's an intense period and mum will need some bricks. You provide those bricks in your evenings and weekends, okay? Because they say change is as good as rest. In my mind, 
this is as good an example of the change being as good a rest as you're going to find because you get to go to work every day and we all work busy uh, jobs with high expectations of us but there are no higher expectations than mum will place on herself to, to look after that baby every day so it's really important that mum gets a good break from that every evening and weekend uh, and I encourage you to have that conversation with mum get super clear on expectations what her expectations are what your expectations are both get expectations and those will need to be adjusted when the baby comes um, and those, that's just an adjustment of expectations, it's not a reduction in what you can achieve. In fact, uh, I think having young kids gives me the impetus to achieve so much more. Uh, and I view it as having a duty to achieve so much more. But just in the very early stages of parenthood, have the mindset that mom is gonna need support. And if you can provide that support as proactively as possible, mom, will benefit, baby will benefit, and you will benefit in the long run too. Okay, if I've helped you today at all, please hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll be notified when I release uh, new videos twice a week. Thanks a lot for watching, I really appreciate it. Any questions you've got, fire them into the comments section below, and I'll, I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot, dads, all the best.